Hi, I'm Annie Matthew, and I'm looking forward to spending the next few minutes talking about responsible AI and the crucial role women play in advancing the AI industry. Traditionally, the term artificial intelligence has been associated with tasks that have been associated with humans, uh, which are now being successfully accomplished by machines. Reporting and analytics have long been there with organizations, and in the last decade, it has advanced a lot, and yet it is not called AI. Artificial intelligence has come a long way, and today it's one of the most powerful tools. And Brad Smith, our chief legal officer, says it well, the more powerful the tool, the greater the benefit or damage it can cause. This innovation is not going to slow down and the work to manage it needs to speed up. That's the reason responsible AI is so critical today. Now, why is AI at this stage? Why not other technologies? Well, the advancements in AI are different because of two things. One is the pace at which the innovation is happening. Compute is increasing. Storage is increasing. Algorithm maturity, so many different kinds of models are out there for data scientists to use. That's coming out at a very fierce pace. Another aspect is the proximity to human intelligence. It's getting closer and closer to human. The amazing work that's been done at Microsoft Research actually gave us these uh, results in speech recognition. We achieved human parity, machine translation, conversational Q&A, object detection. And when we say human parity, it means that for example, if it's in terms of voice, if you hear two audio clips from a machine and a human, you will not be able to make out the difference between the two as to which is human and which is artificial. So these two things are also impacting us at a personal and a societal level. Now imagine the amount of impact or the, the vast significance of AI algorithms that can have on us. The huge debate that's out there today is around fairness, corporate responsibility. You might have seen some of these, the deep fakes uh, around the Obama spoof that came out and the impact it had on a whole nation and maybe even the world politics. If you search for CEO, on the uh, internet site. A bunch of male, white male figures will come up. I remember one of my friends uh, telling me that uh, she's a senior tech leader and that her seven-year-old daughter uh, came back and told her that, well, technology is a boy's game. And the mother asked why, and the kid says, uh, well, I checked it out on the internet and I only see boys doing stuff there. So everything that we do today from a technology space has far reaching impacts, not only on us, but on our children and on the future generations. And one of the tasks we have today is about understanding the unintended consequences of technology and especially of AI because of the severity of impact it could have on us. Some of the top considerations that CEOs and CIOs of organization have when it comes to AI is responsible innovation. And among that, the top ones are, apart from the cost and decision criteria, it's about data quality and access, but it's also about algorithm explainability and selection. It's about transparency. It's about governance and responsible use. Well, responsible AI is a complex and broad topics. Microsoft has been on this journey for quite some time now. And from our understanding, we are sharing some of the things we think is uh, 
important considerations if you are in the business of AI. Now, one of the first things is that it cuts across personal and professional spheres, societal, personal, business, all of that. And every stakeholder in the AI system needs to be participating in ensuring its uh, AI is built responsibly. Whether it is from a business understanding perspective or a data acquisition perspective, at the modeling stage, at the deployment and op stage, all those people who are participating in these processes or decisions need to be aware and take actions towards responsible AI. To share a little bit about our own journey, it started for us in 2016 when Satya Nadella penned an article introducing the concepts of responsible AI. Shortly after, Aether Committee was formed, and Aether Committee looks at ethical, legal, um, security, all of the aspects of AI and ensure that there's a strong practice in principles internally. Each of us actually have to uh, go through the certifications and make sure that we are bringing up uh, topics at the right time if we find something is not working well, as well as comply. We established our AI principles through the future computed um, article and in 2018, notably called for regulation of facial recognition. The Office of Responsible AI actually works, uh, was formed and it ensures that responsible AI is a core tenet in everything we do within Microsoft. And it's super important because all of our products are infused with AI. Now, we look at it in three aspects. One is the principles, fairness, inclusiveness, transparency, accountability, reliability and safety, and privacy and security. Those are the six uh, principles that we have to abide by. And every time we are building or using or aiding AI, we have to make sure that we check it against each of those principles. In terms of practices, governance is super important. We have an ethics committee. We talked about the Office of Responsible AI, which looks at the governance, methodology, and documentation of it. Tools are an integral part, and without tools, it's going to be difficult to ensure that these algorithms are um, actually abiding by the principles. So data engineers and data scientists require tools like differential privacy. We recently, last year, we launched the fairness tool, homomorphic encryption, interpret AML, data drift, all of this. So, and there's much more. So at each stage of the software development, there are a set of tools that are available uh, for data engineers and data scientists to ensure that they are doing AI responsibly. Now, there's been a lot of talk about um, responsibly, and one of the interesting aspects that came up from thought leaders around the world is that expanded data sets are not enough. And part of the reason, and that's a common uh, misunderstanding, the minute you think about fairness uh, or removing bias, you think that, okay, I need to make sure that I have enough data from all races, all religions, all all kinds of uh, demographics. But the interesting piece is there's been a lot of study going on about it. And one of the interesting pieces was Fitbits and other wearables. They don't accurately track heart heartbeats, heart rates in people of color. So it is not just enough to make sure that you are getting um, white and non-white audiences data also in but also check whether the technology underlying is actually relevant to these. Are there racial differences in terms of how the technology is able to gather data? Similarly, clinical trials in healthcare and the 
need at uh, this is an accepted piece that there's a need for diversity in the clinical trial populations. Um, another part of this is that it's a very interesting uh, study that was done by Harvard Medical School and there has also been further studies on this that doctors take women's pain less seriously. So and that results in disparities in experience and treatment. This just goes to show that human biases which are there that if a woman comes to you with pain, you might attribute it first to, you know, um, is it a psychosomatic issue? Um, maybe you have a psychological problem and then get to the uh, accepting that there is pain and then get to medication whereas men come to the doctor with a pain uh, issue they are immediately given medication so they're taken um, at their word so if these biases exist and you're having algorithms which are replicating this then imagine the scale at which that bias is going to be deployed similar thing on um, healthcare access um, and probably right now in the in the case of COVID vaccine distribution this is another huge issue as to uh, when you triage uh, patients for who gets these medicines first um, algorithms need to be or people who are creating those algorithms need to be aware of the biases existing and make sure they're overcoming that as you can see that there are there are so many um, areas in which AI could go wrong as much as so many areas where AI is so powerful. And so now is the time that women participate very strongly in this. And as we said, if you're not part of the studies, if you're not part of the policy making, if you're not part of the creation of AI, uh, it's very possible that the algorithms are not going to be representative of the population and if and it, trust is fundamental to the whole um, AI becoming mature enough and becoming industry standards and for trust to be there it has to be believable uh, and um, explainable and hence it's very important for women as much as um, Asians to participate in it. So there have been a lot of um, studies that are recently coming up or articles that are coming up around why women are key to ensuring that AI scales. So that brings us to the technology part of it. It's important that women participate at the policy level, at the coding level, or even at the user level. So basic digital literacy of AI is going to be a fundamental need. As uh, one MIT professor said, uh, it's almost like we have to be bilingual. You have to have a language and then you have to know AI to whatever level it is. So from Microsoft, we encourage you to take it a step at a time. AI is there for everyone. So if you are a developer, you have got these um, domain specific pre-trained models, on whatever data science tool that you're using and whatever framework that you're using, you can still build on Azure, Azure Machine Learning, AutoML and so on. Now, if you're not a hardcore developer or a data engineer or data scientist, you can still augment your applications with AI and, and that is using the low code, no code framework. So Power BI is our dashboard, Power Apps is your low-code GUI um, based platform where you can build applications very quickly and add AI on top of it using Power Automate. And of course, there's Microsoft Flow, which gives you the automation as well. So whatever edge of the spectrum you are, whether you are a beginner, an expert, you don't want to code, you want to code, there is AI for everyone. Right now we are uh, sponsoring a women in AI program. So scan this QR code and see if you have a workshop near you 
um, and this is to get more women uh, who want to be data engineers or data scientists to get certified and get into contributing to AI at various levels. So with that, I'll end and I look forward to chatting with you again online. Bye.